Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, welcome. Right, so uh, just a, a few a few things. Uh, for the first half hour, we are going to do the launch webinar. So we're going to talk th you through about compost. Um, we have invited parents over as well. So welcome, welcome everyone. Um, just a few, um, uh, a few words about compost. Uh, we, uh, we ha to today we have uh, Professor Alex uh, Lvovsky. Uh, he's the founder of, uh, uh, he's, he's the founder of Compost and um, me and Rachel, we are academic coordinators of Compost. So we uh, run uh, the day-to-day -day activities of Compost. Uh, we also have uh, more than 50 tutors that will be uh, teaching um, teaching you. So um, if you have been accepted, uh, congratulations, of course. Uh, I understand that uh, there might be some people uh, here just for the physics webinar. The physics webinar will start at 6.30, but you're welcome to stay for the whole bit. Uh, so, so yes, uh, welcome. And um, just answering a few really common questions uh, just before we start. A, f a few things. So, um, uh, right. Okay. So, a few things. Uh, oop, how do I cancel that? Okay. Um. If you are accepted, what do you need to do? Uh, well, the first thing is you should be doing is completing assignment 02. The deadline is the 12th of November. The second bit is uh, you need to fill in the questionnaire, which will be sent to you by email today. And, uh, and in the next seven to eight days, uh, please wait for a link to join Canvas. Might take a little bit longer, but we are working very hard to make this happen as soon as possible. All right, so um, this is the, 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 the one thing that I wanted to say before we start. Uh, so uh, let me pass on to um, uh, Professor Lvovsky. Uh, hello. Hi, do you hear me? Uh, yes, we do. Okay, let me share the screen. Do you see the screen? Uh, yes. Okay, very good. So I'll just say a few introductory words that uh, you already, most of the information I'll share is already familiar, but just the ideology. And the ideology is that, well, basically, whenever you plan a certain profession or certain career, it's a good idea to start before the university, before college. And for many careers, many trades, uh, there are opportunities to do so. Like, for example, if you like sports, there are football clubs, sports clubs. If you like arts, there are arts, arts clubs, there's music, there are theater studios, and so on. So everything, virtually everything, except science. Yeah, for science, for, for some reason, people believe that... Uh, you just go to the university and study science there, which is, of course, not a great idea. Um, it's much better to start, if you're interested in science, it's much, it's much better to start it early on. And well, I must say, universities generally realize this uh, issue. And so every, almost every university has an outreach team. And what do these outreach teams do? Well, or they, organ they organize events for school children. So, for example, they bring uh, students from nearby schools to the university where a famous professor will give them a lecture on black holes or quantum computers or uh, show them a laboratory, tell them about the experiments, 
that's happening in the lab, or in contrast, uh, listen to students, to organize a science fair where students would present their projects and give the prize to the best project, or uh, there are Olympiads in which uh, students compete in solving problems. And these events, all of these events, are great in attracting students to science, right? This is some exciting event that's entertaining, that's a lot of fun, um, that kind of get people interested in science. But then what to do with those who are already interested, right? And the problem is that then all these usual approaches to outreach do not really work because, well, they are just one at a time event, right? Then, and, and as such, they are inevitably shallow. They, uh, uh, they, they are not systematic, right? They just require no regular work. They, they therefore deliver no systematic education, and uh, that's what that's the hole, that's the gap that uh, uh, Compos aims to fill. Uh, so, this is there's a couple of statements from our philosophy. The first one. Uh, first two kind of already made, that professional learning must begin long before college. And second, that learning must be systematic. Um, and by systematic, I mean not only that you have to study regularly, that's exactly what we offer at Compass, that you have to do a little bit of work every, um, uh, well, every week, but also that you have a coherent, well-connected curriculum and that we teach you things that you have enough background to understand. So we don't teach you black holes or we don't teach you quantum computers. Actually, we do teach quantum computers to, uh, to some students through uh, another outreach effort through the quantum club, but not at Compass, uh, right? So, so what we teach at Compass is something closely related to your school syllabus, but well, it's based on that, but it goes higher, it goes deeper, and it focuses on solving problems. We'll be, I'll talk about this a bit later, but then uh, let me also mention the third principle, which is that learning must be active. I've been in higher education for 30 years now, and what I've learned, uh, well, from sort of being on both sides of the podium, is that the students learn nothing by just passively, passively listening, right? They're sitting in a lecture hall and listening uh, whatever lecturer is telling you, writing it down, you don't really learn. Right? You learn by doing things. Right? You learn by solving problems, by performing experiments in the lab, if you get a chance to. You learn by teaching people. So, I, I mean, my physics is much better now than it was 20 years ago when I graduated from the university because I've been teaching physics for the past 20 years. And finally, by discussing um, uh, your work with, well, either a mentor or your peers. That's principle number three. And principle number four is that education must be accessible. That means that your opportunity to get, uh, to, 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 to be trained uh, must not depend on your family's income. Uh, must depend primarily on your desire, on your strengths, on your willpower to follow your desire through, right? On your motivation and on, accordingly on the work invested. To some lesser extent, it should also depend on the student's natural talent, but we believe that it like, you know, has to be 1% like inspiration and 99% perspiration. So we're not looking for geniuses. We're looking for normal people, not necessarily talented, but those who just love physics, love mathematics, and want to learn it. Okay, so this is, this is our team. Uh, there is myself. Uh, you won't see much of me because I'm primarily involved in preparing the assignments. Uh, and then there is Vlad and Rachel, who you already met, academic coordinators. And then there is Vlada, who is involved to a little extent. Plus, there is about 50 tutors, typically undergraduate students at Oxford, but uh, not necessarily undergraduates. Some, some of the tutors are graduate students, some of the tutors are professional school teachers, and so on. And yeah, and then we are funded. Uh, we are funded by a philanthropic, generous philanthropic donation from a single organization called MESME, uh, Mathematics Circle for Social Mobility and Excellence. Uh, you can look it up. Now, this is a picture you've seen on the website, uh, the basic principle of how Compass works. 
uh, there is a curriculum team, which is all of us, uh, plus sometimes we hire external people to help us write assignments. There are webinars, one of which you're sitting now. Now we send you an assignment, we publish an assignment. You solve the assignment and then it says email, but actually you don't email, you upload the, the assignment um, so that your tutor can see it. And the tutor, well, they mark your work and also they give you tutorials in small groups. So every tutor is assigned a group of uh, six or eight or nine people. And it will probably begin with eight, but then unfortunately some of you will, um, will leave Compass, will drop out, and then the, your group will be smaller. And then finally, there are academic coordinators that uh, kind of run the whole thing, organize the whole thing. Now the assignments, the assignments you've seen, uh, assignments number one and the number two are quite typical. Uh, so you receive two assignments every three or four weeks, right? One assignment is on mathematics, but it's not pure mathematics. So we don't pay, pay that much attention to axioms and theorems and rigorous proofs. It's more like mathematical methods, techniques that you need to, uh, to use in order to succeed in physics or in essentially in any other science. So each assignment, again, you've seen uh, contain uh, reading material. They contain links to online material, which uh, of course there is a lot of online material. So what we do is we thoroughly review that material, uh, watch it, and we select the material that we believe is, well, is of high quality and is uh, best suitable uh, in the context of what we're trying to teach you. Um, and there are examples and there are problems that you have to solve. So each assignment, uh, each pair of assignments rather, requires some 10 or 15, more like 20 hours of work. Uh, so that's, uh, that means that you really have to, have to dedicate yourself to compost if you are inside, if you are in, that really you have to, uh, you have to work hard, you have to sacrifice a lot of fun, a lot of TV, a lot of parties, a lot of sports, a lot of other things. Instead, you have to sit at your desk and, you know, try to solve problems, get desperate sometimes, get uh, sorry about yourself, how dumb you are, and then finally get a moment of inspiration that maybe you're actually not that dumb, and then uh, and, and then get to the next problem and the cycle will repeat itself. And that's how, how you learn, how we all learn. Um, yeah, uh, Compos focuses on problem solving skills that's important in the sense that um, in the sense that uh, the physics that they teach you at school is actually not that much focused on problem solving it's primarily focused on knowledge right they teach you knowledge and physics in the same they teach you knowledge in, in history or geography and of course physics as well as math is not as much about how much you know but about how well you can use that knowledge to solve problems. And that's exactly the skill that we are trying to train you. And that again, requires a lot of independent work. Now, this is the curriculum. Uh, the year 12 curriculum is here. It is uh, a significant fraction, about half is dedicated to mechanics, different areas of mechanics. But then we'll also teach you some electrostatic, uh, some, um, uh, and then some uh, material related to differential equations and waves. In parallel, the mathematics um, syllabus supports what we plan to, to teach you in physics. So we start with uh, sort of advanced trigonometry uh, to teach you, uh, to, you know, to give you the mathematical apparatus to operate uh, with mechanics. Then uh, some elements of calculus, again, to understand uh, important concepts in mechanics, you need to understand calculus. Uh, and then some function analysis, how to analyze functions, how to plot them. Complex numbers, which are of course also essential for many fields in uh, physics. And finally, differential equations and elements of linear algebra. So that's the plan for this year. As you, as you see, it is quite advanced and quite exciting. And we're confident that with sufficient effort, all of you will be able to cover it. So just think that you will actually be able to actually understand all of this. Uh, now tutorials, all tutorials are online. None are in person uh, in groups of six or eight people. Um, we use online whiteboards. So these uh, 
websites. Some people, some tutors will use Miro, some people will use iDraw, and so on. Um, all tutors have uh, stylus enabled, enabled tablets, such as iPads, for communication. So they'll actually write equations, and you will see the equations on your screen. Now, we strongly recommend that you as students also procure um, similar equipment. It doesn't have to be a tablet. It can just be a stylus pad which is uh, much less expensive and hopefully affordable uh, to most of you. Uh, it is not mandatory, but I, we recommend that you have a stylus pad so that you can communicate your ideas in writing uh, to your tutorial group. Now that's that's the sort of our history. Uh, that's on the right, sorry about this. Uh, on the right, you can see, uh, well, well, the. The, the, the students reporting how their confidence improved in physics and math. And you see that the great majority report significantly uh, positively. Uh, and this is the history. So we started about two years ago with a, about 100 students. Last year, we had about 350 students. This year, we, we, well, we received funding for 380 students. But you guys did so well in your um, in your entrance assignment, that we were kind of compelled to hire many more to, to recruit many more students. We admitted 560 students, meaning that we have to search for more funding. So, if your parents are uh, millionaires and willing to help, please uh, please contact us. We'd appreciate uh, some donations. Uh, that's uh, that's all I had to say. Again, welcome to Compass. Enjoy it work hard, and your work will definitely come to fruition. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, th thank you, Alex. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, just a few words from me uh, before the end. Uh, uh, the finishing part will be done by by Rachel Rachel Hawkins. So um, a few things like uh, mo mostly I will be going through commonly com uh, frequently asked questions. Okay, so uh, um, as I said, you need to complete assignment O2 by twelfth of November. It's uh, two weeks less than two weeks left, so please uh, get going. Uh, fill in the questionnaire. This is uh, ex this is the most important part because you do not get a place until you fill in your questionnaire. So if you have a, if we've uh, we've we will send you a questionnaire. You need to fill that in, and at that point, your uh, place is officially you have a, an official place for compost. Okay, uh, and uh, in a few days, you will receive a link to join Canvas. So why do we, uh, you need to formally? Why do you need to formally accept a place? Because your place, uh, your place costs us about seven hundred pounds, probably a little bit more than that. Uh, we have a waiting list of deserving candidates who we did not take. So if you are unsure whether you can commit to the whole year of compost until until the beginning of July, please let us. Uh, please just not fill in the form. So if you don't want to accept the place, don't. There, there, there are other people who uh, who would like to take. Um, so. Um, as we have we had people who started compost and then in two weeks decided ah I don't like it so please think carefully before you accept a place. Make sure you can consistently spend about four to six hours per week on compost assignments, and uh, uh, that you can attend your tutorial before accepting uh, before before accepting a place. So please keep that in mind. Uh, the tutorial goes on top of the four to six hours. Okay, so uh, it's four, 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 six hours of independent work plus the plus the tutorial. Um, okay, so how to uh, how to get feedback from assignment zero one? Uh, please ask your tutor. Once you get a tutor, they will be able to go through parts of the assignment. Unfortunately, we do not share the solution sheets. This is standard Oxford practice. Uh, but I have to say that more detail because uh, we had a th more 1,050 applications. We had to mark them really quickly and we couldn't give detailed feedback. Uh, on assignment two, three, et cetera, you will receive more detailed feedback okay, from your tutors. And you will be in small groups of eight, so you can always come to your tutor and ask, 
what how do how do you solve this how do you solve this where did i go wrong you can always communicate with your tutor uh plus you will have a ch a chat area where, where you can communicate with each other and you can uh, talk through uh, some of the questions after the assignment is done um so yes um well uh from compost pretty much uh, uh professor lewowski has covered what compost is about we um we have a new year 10 program this year. So uh, year 12 is the longest running program. It has been running for, it's the third year running now. Um, this is your syllabus for the for the year. Uh, next year, you can, if you complete year 12, you can get a place for year 13. If you complete all assignments, you automatically get a place for year 13. And uh, you, um, this, Year 13 study until uh, February. Okay, uh, when do you have tutorials? Well, we want to start on next week, but uh, we can have delays depending on uh, circumstances, uh, which um, we cannot predict at the moment. So hopefully uh, everything will be sorted by uh, next week. Uh, do, I, do you need to buy a pandemic? Well, you don't have to, but it makes life easier. And you will be using it at your university a lot. So you might consider buying. So today I just went online and saw that you can buy a, a, one for 17 pounds. You can buy secondhand. Uh, I bought a secondhand one for uh, eight pounds, I think, uh, a couple of years ago. I found one for 15 pounds. Um, so yeah, so definitely uh, you can you can find reasonably inexpensive ones. I have a wireless one. This cost me like 50 pounds. So, um, and yeah, so uh, it's not, uh, hi highly recommend if you can get one. Um, okay, and uh, now uh, a, a word to Rachel. And uh, just a quick reminder, at about uh, 6, 6.40, uh, we're running a bit late. At six, about six forty, we can. We, I will start the physics webinar. All right, all right, Rachel. Thank you. Oh. Hi, Vlad. Thanks very much. Uh, are you going to act as my slide bunny uh, this I evening? Can. As well? That yep. will be fantastic. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm here to talk to you about our behaviour and expectations. So Vlad and Alex have played the role of good cop. I'm now going to slightly play the role of bad cop as our little Lego friends here. Uh, show you and we're going to discuss the student code of conduct and what we expect around your participation. Thanks for that. So our code of conduct basically covers the interactions in the online environment, which is where compasses run. All your interactions with tutors, students, the staff, and our expectations around the tutorials and assignments. So this governs the use of Canvas and Slack, which are the two learning platforms that we use to deliver the program. Thank you. We have the main rules for um, the code of conduct. The ones that are written up at the top really are about how you behave in the online environment. So we ask that all of the interactions that you have with the tutors, students and staff are polite and respectful. And I'm going to explain a little bit more what I mean by that in a minute. Please use your real name. And I mean your full first name and last name, not a nickname in the platforms. We were asked you about this when you joined uh, Google Classrooms and some people did, uh, quite a few people didn't. And we sort of let it slide because we wanted to see how you do on the assignment. But I am the person who enrolls you into Canvas and I am not putting you in there with anything other than your full name. So there will be no nicknames like Joey Boy 2007 slipping their way in. You have to have your full first name and last name on each of these um, online areas, please. And that's for safety reasons so that we can see who is saying what. Also for safety, we ask that you do not send private direct messages to the students or your tutors. All of your communications will be done in the open forum on Slack in your groups and on your in your Canvas section areas. 
Um, please do not go and look up where your tutors are on social media. They do not want you popping into their Instagram accounts. And we would regard that as a breach of our code of conduct. Respect their privacy, respect each other's privacy. This is a professional area. It's a professional service that we're delivering to you. And it's not a place for you to go cyber stalking people who happen to be in your tutor group. If you do need to contact your tutor and there are perfectly legitimate reasons why you might want to have a private conversation with them, maybe you're ill, you want to ask them a quiet question about something, you can do that through us. So if you send the email to compost at physics.ox.ac.uk, put the tutor's name in your subject line and we will forward it to them. And we will also accept, take the reply and forward it on to you. This is to ensure that you do not have access to the tutor's private email addresses and that they do not have access to yours. And that's part of the way in which we safeguard the students in our online school. Thank you. Later this evening, you will be sent an email with the enrollment form information attached and a link to complete the form. Please follow the instructions you are given on the form. It does cause us an awful lot of hassle to have to unpick the mess that's caused when people do not follow the instructions that they are sent. So we are emphasizing that we need you to register with your personal email address. Do not register with a school email address. About half the schools in the country have a filtering system in place where external emails are blocked, which means we can send you all the information in the world about your tutorial groups, but if you've registered with your school email address, it won't get through to you, which means that you will be sat there a month from now wondering why on earth you haven't been allocated a tutorial group and you'll get in touch and say what's going on and you won't have got any information because you put your school email address on the form. Also, we would like you not to register under your parents' email address. That is because your parents would then be able to log into our online platform and have access to all of the other students as a result. And that would be a breach of our safeguarding rules. We do not allow any unknown adult, unscreened adult, to have access to the student areas. So you must use your email address, not your mum and dad's. And the last thing we'd like ask you to do is check with your parents, check with your adults who you live with before you confirm your tutorial times. You might think it's fine to say Saturday morning is great and, and you can attend tutorials on a Saturday morning, but you've forgotten that your younger brother's got football practice or that your mum's got something regular that's going on then and it causes a bit of a clash with your family schedule. The person in your household who's going to know all of these little nitty bit gritty bits of detail and scheduling are the mum and the dad. So please check in with them before you confirm when your tutorial time is, because it's like I said, it's going to be a bit tricky for us to unpick all of that if we then have to put you in a different tutorial group because you got the day wrong. As Vlad had said, this enrollment form is crucial. It is the formal acceptance of your place in compost. No enrollment form means no place. So please respond to the email when you get it later this evening, today or tomorrow, so that we can start sorting your tutorial groups out. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna briefly talk about safeguarding, which we take very seriously. We want to make sure that you are in a safe and friendly environment. And we make sure that our tutors have enhanced DBS checks and safeguarding training. Uh, Vlad and I are both designated safeguarding leads for the project. And we have some rules that around safeguarding um, and the risk assessment that we've put in place for these activities that we would like you to, to comply with. Um, the main one is that we ensure no unknown adults or students join on our online learning platforms. And that's, that's really important. And that's one of the reasons why we don't have parent email addresses, for example, being used to log in. For safety reasons, we do record our tutorials to shoot Anybody have um, anything they want to say about something that happened in a session that made them feel uncomfortable, we can go back and check the recording. You may be asked to show yourself on camera at least once in your first tutorial so that we know you are who you say you are, because we've never met you. There are hundreds of you. We'd like you to wave to your tutor at least once in your first tutorial so that we can check you are who you say you are. If you have any problems or concerns, and it could be that you think there's somebody else in your tutor group who's being a bit mean. Somebody has been messaging you and they shouldn't have been. 
uh, maybe there's something that's happened in your tutorial sessions that just left you feeling in your gut a little bit uncomfy and you want to talk it through with someone. You can contact myself, Vlad, uh, the physics designated safeguarding lead, who's a lovely lady called Sean, or you can go straight to the university safeguarding officers. There is nothing that is too trivial that you couldn't run by us and we'd rather that you bother us and let us know if you're not feeling comfy about something then sit there and let it stew and possibly have a situation get worse. So you can always drop us a line completely confidentially and we will try and sort it out for you. Okay, so I just want to talk through what I mean by polite and respectful so that we're all on the same page. Examples of ways you can be polite in an online environment would be to make sure, for example, that you learn how to pronounce and spell the people's names in your tutorial group and your tutor. Quite a few of our tutors are not British. They are overseas students who've come to the UK to learn. Um, they have excellent English and they are very interested in helping on the compost programme. But they may have foreign names and you may not be sure how to pronounce it. So just ask. And likewise, the other people in your tutor group, they may have names you've not come across before. Please make sure that you ask them what they want to be called, you do that correctly, and that if you're typing names in chat boxes or messages, you, you take the trouble of spelling people's names correctly, because that is just polite. Likewise, get their gender right. If you don't know, because they don't often have their camera on or you're not sure, you can just ask. The next point um, kind of doesn't really need spelling out, but I'm going to elaborate a little bit. Don't use the online platforms as a way of talking down or belittling people or harassing them in any way. Some of the students who join our programme come from exceptionally well-resourced schools. They have parents and grandparents who all went to university. They may indeed even be scientists themselves. They've had access to private tutors excellent physics teachers and schools where early exam entry and after school clubs and things are common and therefore they are probably ahead of the curve in terms of their maths and physics skills. But we also have students on this course who are in the exact opposite situation. They may be the first person in their family ever to go to university. They're in a school in a poor area that's restarted three times in the last 10 years they have no qualified physics or maths teachers in their school. Nobody gets to do GCSEs early and there aren't any after school clubs or resources available. You will find yourselves in groups with people at either end of the spectrum. What I don't want to see is you piling in on a chat where somebody's asking a question you think is too simple, basic, and something snide happens where somebody says, oh my God, I can't believe you don't know that. No, they don't. And, you know, lucky you that you went to a school where you were taught that. So please don't be a jerk on the chat rooms. When you're in your tutorials, make sure you share the time with the other students. And also the opposite, make sure that you speak up and, and take part in that tutorial. It's no good dominating the tutorial and not letting anybody else speak. And it's no good sitting there silently with your camera and your microphone off and never taking part either. So that time and that space is for all of the people in your group. Make sure you all get a turn and you all take part. If you're going to miss a tutorial, you do need to tell someone. Firstly, you need to tell your tutor. It would be extremely rude just not to turn up. If you have a meeting with somebody, even if it's a regular weekly meeting, you do have to explain your absence. And we do take um, registers of tutorials, so your attendance is going to be monitored. And I would hope that you were all well mannered enough to let somebody know if you couldn't turn up. It is unacceptable to ghost your tutor. Thank you. I've got two slides here about how to communicate, how to write an email. You might think that this is not necessary to spell out, but having had 70 emails pile into my inbox on Monday, some of which, quite frankly, were just ill-written and downright rude, I am going to put this into our presentation this evening. Here's an example of an email which is helpful. This student has put who they are in the subject line and their ID, 
and they've added a bit of information to tell me what this is about. They don't have to do that, but it really helps if you can identify yourself up front. They've said, dear team, they are identifying who this message is going to. It's not going to their tutor via me, it's going to us, to Compost. I have to go on holiday. Over the half term, I miss my tutorial with Jane Smith in group Y1201. I wondered if it's okay and who I should let know. Well, I love this student because they've told me exactly what the problem is. They've given me the name of their tutor. They've given me their tutor group. They've given me their, uh, their name and their ID code, which means I can immediately act on this and respond. He's also signed off politely. Thank you, Evan Jones. Lovely. I'm going to go off and deal with that straight away. But here's an example of an email which I probably am not going to do anything about. Notice how there is no subject. There is no salutation at the top. I have no idea who this is supposed to be going to. Me, the tutor, God knows, Father Christmas. Um, I have a problem with an upload. I can't do this assignment. Doesn't tell me who they are, what year they're in or anything else. This is rude, frankly. It's a bit like barking an instruction at somebody. It's completely unhelpful. And I'm probably going to file it in my deleted messages folder. Please don't send me these kinds of emails. I cannot reply to you. And you waste all of our time without giving me the necessary information. Thank you. So our expectations around your participation have kind of been explained by Vlad and Alex, but I'm going to, I'm going to be a little bit more specific here. We do expect you to attend 75% so three out of every four tutorials over the course of the year. It's not 100% because, you know, things happen in life. People get sick. You have mock exams. You might have interviews. We're not unreasonable in that way. We don't expect 100% attendance. Likewise, we'd like you to hand in 75% of the assignments over the course of the year, which means just as with the attendance at tutorials, you have a little leeway but not much because 75% of 10 assignments is still eight assignments or seven and a half. An assignment is counted as completed if you have attempted successfully half the questions. So you don't have to get 100% and we don't throw people out if you struggle. So long as you have tried your best at at least half the questions, then your assignment counts as completed. But what you can't do is hand in one or two questions and claim that you have done the assignment. There is a 50% requirement in, in terms of attempting those problems. And if you've got them wrong, you have the opportunity to ask your tutor to go back and make corrections. And we will check to ensure that you have actually done 50% of the questions at least. Uh, I have to say that the vast majority of students last year did achieve this. We had 75% completion rate on the assignments and most of the students attempt all of the questions on the assignments. Compost is an intensive course and it's for people with a very strong interest in STEM um, and it cannot be fitted around lots and lots of other extracurricular activities. So if you are doing five A-levels and an EPQ and you're captain of the football team and you are on the youth orchestra and you think you're going to fit Compass in as well, I think you probably aren't and you might want to reevaluate your schedule. This is not a homework that you can do in half an hour the evening it has to be handed in and I think we're just trying to reiterate that to you over the course of this afternoon. This is something you need to do a little bit at a time over the course of a couple of weeks or not. A bit like if you played a musical instrument, you might have your lesson every week where you sit with your music teacher and practice. You'd go away and learn some pieces, but you'd probably also just strum on your guitar or tinkle on the piano because it was fun, because you wanted to get better at it and you had a tricky piece of music you were trying to learn, or maybe you were just jamming with some friends. And if you added up all those little bits of practice, your lesson, the time that you were um, doing scales, the time that you were playing around with fun, all together, you probably find you have done three or four hours in a week of your music practice. That's what we're expecting from Compos. You dip in and out of it, you do the reading, you watch some videos, you try the problems, you come back and try them again, you do your tutorial, 
and it adds up and over the course of a week you find that you've done three or four hours of work. We don't expect you to block out a period of time, sit at a desk uh, like some monk in a monastery and dedicate yourself to nothing but physics. I mean, that's unreasonable. And also we hope that you find it enjoyable. We hope that you have got a really strong interest in science. This is your thing and that you fall upon it um, like a man in a desert falling on an oasis, basically. We're here to give you something you may never have had before. Um, so please don't view it as a chore. This is fun. This should be something you look forward to and we hope that you get the best out of it. If you, are, if you abide by our code of conduct and you um, participate as fully as you can, you will get a lot out of the programme over the course of the year. The final slide on our presentation, which is going to be available to you as a recording, has the contact information should you need to get in touch with any of us. Can I suggest you direct all inquiries to the main Compass email at the top? And then there are the names of everybody underneath who you may need to get in touch with in any situation and some of the things that we particularly deal with. So all the information is there, but you can just drop us a line at compost at physics.ox.ac.uk tomorrow if you've got any questions or we'll try and answer um, what you're putting up now in the chat box. Thank you. All right, yes, thank you. Uh... Uh, th thank you, Rachel. So yes, uh, this is uh, this is about it. There's a few questions pouring in. Um, uh, I'm uh, we'll try to answer them in the chat. But uh, basically, uh, we need to know when you are available for a tutorial. You will receive an email. You fill it in. You tell us when you're available. We look at when tutors are available, and then you, you put we put you into a group with tutors, so we don't have to um, shuffle you around because uh, the tutor can do Monday and you can't. Uh, so yes, um, a lot of questions. Does Compass affect your chances with operational missions? Uh, well, yes, because you will, if you do Compass, you know physics better, so you have a better chance of going to, or to Oxford. But it just mentioning it, uh, I mean, yeah, it might help, might not. Uh, it's it's the it's the your knowledge and your uh, your skills that you acquired compass that that's that what actually counts